¿sí? Hi everybody, this is Jaime from Evil, Evil Warnings LA. Com, and behind the camera I have my friend Alex helping me today and today this is a very special interview we have Kevin and Terence from Suffocation uh, some of you you might not know Kevin he's the new singer and he's uh, touring with the band currently and uh, maybe I would like just to start with him so how, how are you feeling in the band how long have you been uh, in the band? Uh, this is actually my first tour with them, uh -huh. uh, but I've been jamming with them for a while, confident, the shows have been awesome, uh, the turnouts have been great, the reactions have been awesome, it's been a lot of fun. Okay, yeah, because you, you have some uh, heavy shoes to fill, oh, yeah. Frank and uh, what's his name, uh, yeah. Ricky, yeah, and Ricky, yeah. and Bill, John Gallagher, goes on and on and on. <laughs> uh -huh. Bill, uh -huh. we have John Gallagher, yeah. we have Ricky, we have Bill's, so yeah. you've been no, uh, knowing each other for a while, I yeah, guess. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're okay, so welcome. yeah. Welcome. Yeah, thank you, home thank home. you. All right, so I'm going to start, uh, well, first of all, like a few weeks ago, I, my my wife had twins. Oh, congrats. congrats. So, that's thank awesome. you. And you're <laughs> so that's here? Why How I'm, did you get out? Uh, uh, that's why I'm a little bit like, is it going to happen? No. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> so... And I got the album, the pre-order nice. on Friday with the t-shirt and everything. And uh, I've been with the kids for a couple of weeks already. And I think the album is going to stay with me forever, kind of in my <laughs> mind. Cool. I've been playing it a lot to, uh, to the kids. Yeah. Like, like two weeks old. Important time frame. But yeah, <laughs> but especially because the first song, Clarity Through the pre Deprivation, mm -hmm. which is basically what fatherhood is. Yeah. I mean, it is. Just yeah. <clears throat> That's just the reality of it. You know you got responsibilities and you can't ignore them. And, Being deprived. And of just know you're not going to ever get sleep, you know, <laughs> at least not for a couple of years. Uh -huh. Do you, you know? guys have kids? No, no yes, but it's okay God. and I'm glad I know them, man. It's I learned the hard way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, uh -huh. I, everybody in my family had kids except for me and I'm glad that I didn't. Uh -huh. I learned from their, uh, from their, uh, you know, happiness, uh -huh. let's say. <laughs> I'd rather be a cool uncle. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was an uncle before, but now, yeah, I'm a yep, dad. Now you're pops. So anyway, you know, it's uh, yeah, it's funny because I've been like suffering from lack of sleep, and then the first song of the album, I only knew about the single. Yeah, That's, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh shit, clarity. So, but I haven't found any clarity at all. Have you guys found any clarity from moments of like intense? exercise or pressure or well i mean you know you always find a little bit of clarity and hindsight like after the fact of everything being done you know we always end up going on a stage and i mean me i'm my own worst critic i'm like oh that show was shit but then you know you look back at it like a couple of days later and you get that little clarity of thought where you're like oh you know what that wasn't such a bad show after uh -huh. all you know and you know the people were into it so maybe it was really a good thing and the, you get those moments of clarity every now and then, but for the most part, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty aggressive. You're pretty, you know, busy doing what you got to do, uh -huh. so you don't really think that often on those things as opposed to thinking on the things you're trying to accomplish at the moment. Okay, that makes know? sense. I think it was, I think it was after my first show with them. Oh, okay, all right. <laughs> the whole like months prior, like, oh, we're touring. Who are we touring with? Oh, Morbid Angel. All right, fair. All right, first tour out. You know, big shoes, big, big spotlight. You know, and then and then we played uh, Baltimore, and John Gallagher came out with oh, okay. you know the uh -huh. fittest guys, and everyone's just like, I'm looking at the crowd, going, all right, the crowd's never seen me. There's John. He did the job once on a tour, so I'm like, I feel the I feel the intenseness, and then after the set, the clarity rushed it. You know, people's reactions, and it was so sick, surreal moment. I'm kind of. I envy you. I would <laughs> like to experience something I mean, like that. It just goes to show you that there's like some camaraderie amongst us uh, uh -huh. metalheads out oh, there. Awesome. You know what I mean? Trying to keep everything together for everyone. And I think that's cool. So big up to John for filling in. Thanks, oh, yeah. buddy. And they have the Dying Feeders, they have a new album coming yep. out. So. Yes, they do. Yeah. Wrong one to fuck with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't. I got my pre-order. Oh, with I, the knife. I got that the pocket knife. knife. I just got the email saying it's shipped. I was like, hell yeah. I was thinking. It's I don't so know. Stuff. That sounds a little bit risky for pre-order. We, we started yeah, asking okay. him questions it's, about it's it. Cool. Yeah. He was just like, yeah. Someone said it was a good idea, and I was like, all right. Well, I got one. And he's uh -huh. like, and me and Eric were teasing him like, oh, so what if a kid comes into a school with it and starts? Yeah. He's like, man, I don't know, man. It's not. More thinking that'll <laughs> yeah. be better in the seedy neighborhoods that we play in. You yeah, know? yeah. At least you got a little bit of protection somewhere yeah. along the way. Oh, I have one. But yeah, but it's a cool yeah. looking knife. Yeah, it oh is. yeah, black blade, red handle. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so let's keep moving. For example, I have this next question, which uh, I've been reading a little bit, like uh, some reviews online, some people kind of like complaining about the album. Yeah, uh, you know. But I don't agree. And I would say that this is kind of like the Suffocations kind of punk album. Yeah, yeah. Because it's a little bit more to the point and kind of like, yeah, it's, yeah. Very, it's a very straightforward, uh -huh. aggressive metal record. Uh -huh. That's just what it is. That's how previous albums were uh -huh. too. It's just you know, it's, I just it's think, awesome that I it's think there. that you know, there's those fans out there that just never want to see change. They only want to hear like and listen to the things that they you know initially got into the band with. Mm -hmm. So when they see member changes and when they hear that there's somebody else different doing something, playing drums or playing guitar or something, they get kind of offended because when they went out and bought your records they feel like they're a part of your band and which which is very cool but in the same light they don't understand what it takes to actually be in a band and keep everything together a lot of the times it's not people being vindictive with each other it's people just having real life issues like you had you just had twins yeah, you know yeah. well that could be one we'll of those things that, yeah, yeah exactly you're not going to be on tour during that so you know these know. things that complicate yeah. being in a business and being in a band and being and doing what you love you know but, uh, you know, those people are entitled to their opinions. If they don't like it, they don't have to buy it. They don't have to listen to it. I'm sure they're going to download it because everybody oh, downloads yeah. Oh, it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what hmm. I mean? So, you know, let the hypocritical point stand and All let right. the people say whatever they want to say. As far as I'm concerned, we play this music because we love it and we want to bring that to you. And that's that. If mm -hmm. they don't like it, they don't have no, to buy it. I enjoyed it, it a lot because... Uh even though I like kind of like brutal death and technical death metal yeah, and stuff like that, I'm not really a musician to Ooh. really understand sometimes what's happening. Yeah, take it for what it is. So for me, it takes like a lot, <laughs> but this album kind of like, it, it required less effort. So I enjoyed it like quicker yeah, than exactly. usual. Well, I mean, that, that's also an object that like this band always tries to, uh, tries to take into consideration we want to have things that like actually stick with you and those don't go over your head mm -hmm. you know for the really super technical bands and stuff like that when you're younger and you're you're an up-and-coming musician to watch these bands and to emulate it and to, to do all that is fine but that's more for a musician than it is for the average listener who's going to listen to your record every day or go to work humming one of the riffs in your head and that's really what we would like to do in death metal make it so you can remember it when you're hopping in your car you remember the riffs that you know would be played your homonym it's something that you know mm -hmm. is rather catchy mm -hmm. even though it still does have the technical elements it's still comprehensible and i think that's what we're trying to get at yeah you have a few i have actually that was one of the questions uh there are like a couple of i would say classic suffocation tracks in this album like uh, return to the abyss yeah 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 absolutely. that track could be in i mean if yeah, there is ever exactly. the greatest hits by suffocation has to be there it's well like, thanks it's man so i appreciate like, that dun, dun, dun. yeah like, it's it, it's a straightforward just balls out aggressive uh -huh. song and you know that's what we're trying to get out we're not trying to reinvent the wheel of what suffocation was we're just trying to keep that same standpoint mm -hmm. so if people don't like us as we as we progress over the course of time mm -hmm. hey, you know so be it but we really kind of like put our heart and souls into our records mm -hmm. and uh you know you never want to put out a bad suffer record so when you go and you buy a suffer record you know what to expect mm -hmm. you know and it's it, not, we're not going to change it in you know? that particular song i love that uh, clean guitar at the end yeah, ding, 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 yeah, ding, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. you know that was just one of those things it was like we, yeah, one of, of those things that we right? haven't we haven't tried it anywhere in it so for that element i thought it kind of worked cool these guys thought it worked cool mm -hmm. so that's why it ended up there it wasn't <laughs> something like you know we sat there and meditated on it to make that happen. It was just like, oh, wow, yeah. that might sound cool over this. And there it is. You so know? you guys, uh, are, you feel more comfortable maybe uh, playing or just making songs that are a little bit more on the catchy side or more like, for example, um, which one is this? I forgot the name. It's in the new album. Uh, hmm. <laughs> I forgot the name of the track. I mean, on, on, on more tracks that are more like a little Super bit more technical. more technical, less melody. Well, I think that I mean, being a guitar player, being a guitar player, of course, I want to play something that has like some effort to it, you know, to keep it where it's not stale and boring for myself and for the other guys. But also in the same light, we do want to make it where it's catchy. So we we're trying to find that fine line in between both, mm -hmm. so that way it keeps the musician interested and it keeps the person who's just a 
uh, music listener interested. Mm-hmm. And um, it's in the pocket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're trying to, you know, we're trying to float both areas in a genre of music that really just doesn't give you a lot of time to yeah. do that in. Yeah, you know? yeah. Each song's five minutes of just blistering hatred. You know, mm-hmm. where are you gonna put the flamenco part in there? You yeah, know. No, I don't <laughs> so you know, we just try to do the best that we can yeah. do with what we have and try to make stuff that's uh, listenable. Uh-huh. You know. Yeah, the track that I was in, uh, The Violation. Yeah, The Violation is yeah. my favorite. It's probably my favorite off that. Uh, um, it's just a straight, is straightforward, you yeah, know, yeah, as yeah. straightforward as we can get it. All right, so let's get get me... that one. So, um, I'm kind of a little bit uh, interested in the, the theme of the album. That is a little bit like uh, well, the theme, spot. yeah. The theme is more about like transcending like you know physical physicality into like the nether regions and mm-hmm. shit like that. So, uh, I mean, it's a very open to interpretation type of concept, especially when you're reading the lyrics that Derek wrote. Um, you know, it's more about transcending life, how you prepare for it, what things would make you angry enough to take your own life, mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. So, I mean. You know, from the cover to the actual, from the cover to the actual lyrics, that concept kind of fits together. And of course, it's death metal, but we didn't want to make it your average hammer smash face kind of death metal, where it's just blood and guts and porno grind and stuff yeah. like that. You know, we were trying to be a little bit more intelligent about it. So there's a lot of um, aspects that come from like the Tibetan Book of the Dead and other things like that are out there as far as knowledge base is concerned. Yeah, because uh, reading the lyrics, I was thinking that even it can be a can be applied today like you know the political turmoil kind yes. of like for people find your truth find your own truth yeah. exactly. read, get exactly. informed like it's a more realistic horror uh-huh. you know that's what I like about it that's how I take it yeah. you know it's it's all it's all mental uh-huh. yes, you know exactly. it's just the processing it's like holy shit uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, so open up to interpretation uh-huh. right right alright so let's see um I wanted to ask if you ever maybe thought or if you would consider recording with somebody like, let's say, Rick Rubin, one of these a little bit like mainstream people, if they were interested. Well, I mean, I guess if they were interested, it wouldn't be a bad idea to do it. You know, it's always nice to attach a huge name to your record. But uh, I mean, I'm not. I would really, yeah. Character. I mean, I would be better off going back to Scott Burns if I can get him out of retirement. Oh, right. that would, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, that's that's just where I'm uh-huh. at, you know. So, but I mean, it, it's nice to have a big name attached to it. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's really for us. We play death metal, so we're probably going to stick with what's underground. But, but, but do you think you do you think you you would like maybe to try to push a little bit like some other more experimental stuff? You feel confined or? I mean, or I, th- I think that, I mean, as far as for me, if I was going to be playing something differently guitar-wise, yeah. it wouldn't be in this band. Uh-huh. Like, it would be in some other band. Yeah. You know, suffocation, suffocation. It's been that way for 30 years. I'm going to keep it the fucking way yeah. it is. I don't want you guys to be like, oh, they put out this shitty fucking record that's lame. You know, it's not going to happen. Our next album's just, a jazz album. Right. <laughs> no, our next album is not going to be a jazz album. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a brutal death metal record. Exactly. You might as well count on it. Okay, so... um So, uh, coming back to something that you mentioned before about, yeah, some people don't like the new, me- not that they don't like the new members, but they don't accept change yeah, sometimes. they don't like so, to say, they don't like to see change, you know? But, I kind of see suffocation a little bit, it's kind of like the Miles Davis of death metal. Well, that's that cool. <laughs> there is this kind of, like, group of young people that come, other veterans that come and help, it's like this... Nucle- is in exactly. the center of a lot of people that come and go, but still the sound stays the same. I, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, uh, well, I don't want to say, but it's, no, no, it's, yeah, it's, it's the well, guitar. I mean, the yeah, that's sound what I mean. Is, like he said, Suffo Suffo, it has the same yeah, style I mean, to it. You know, he's he's the I glue. think that if any other member that was like from the original lineup or whatever wanted to change <clears throat> the sound of suffocation, it probably would have happened already a long time ago, and then like. Literally, that's not the direction that any of us were going. Like mm-hmm. me, Cerrito, everybody else, um, really wanted to keep it a, as aggressive as it possibly could be, and I'm just holding up to that same standpoint mm-hmm. with everybody else around. And because I've been there since the beginning, you know, I know all the music. 
so it helps when I'm showing it to other guys and then they can get the actual vibe of where we're coming from with everything mm -hmm. and keep that alive you yeah. know what I mean um, and that's a cool thing you know it's a cool thing most people would be like oh what are you, you guys just gave up you know it's mm -hmm. like you know that's not why we play music yeah I think the other thing too is the fact that you know the new guys me Charlie and Eric join the band as friends and fans mm -hmm. of the music so no by no means none of us want to change it you know mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. we want to we want to hear the same shit that we've been hearing yeah. you know we don't want to ever distort it you know mm -hmm. so that's why I think people have been enjoying the shows yeah because it, there are many bands that change a lot of members but yeah. I feel that's suffocation yeah, yeah that's every a lot of people's first mistake is to put their own twist on it as soon as they join mm -hmm. or, or or at all you know yeah. it's it's you know we want to stay original but we want to keep it the way it was. Uh, you know. I hope it stays like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and now I see Derek is somewhere, somewhere there, but I'm gonna ask you some questions about him <laughs> <laughs> because I think he's a very interesting guy. <laughs> because uh, actually, I've been wanting for years to do this project that is, uh, I kind of have like a title, but it's, it's some kind of project that it goes, it traces the origins of Brutal Death Metal in California. But okay. it starts with you guys. It starts uh. with the East Coast. <coughs> okay. And I see Derek is like the link between, between the East, and, East West, yeah. and West because he has played in so many bands here yeah. that and are so essential now. There. Yeah, he's from here. There, there, there is, there is. There he is. Look at that crusty There he is. <laughs> feeling sexy? So what's the answer to the question, Derek? How, you, how come you're the East, East Coast, West Coast connection? <laughs> Well, you know, growing up, listening to the most brutal shit, we always try to imitate, you know, what, what we liked. And, uh, you know, if you work hard enough and, you know, you talk to the right people, you know, put yourself out there and learn learn the trade. You know, the next thing you know, you can be playing with your, your inspirations. You can be playing with the people that you like. Touche. Mm -hmm. And then his whole life goes downhill from there. You're from Oceanside, right? Oceanside. Yeah, Ocean Side San Diego, California. Uh -huh, that's what, so, yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's uh, very interesting that he's kind of like this guy that keeps switching. Yeah, yeah I mean, you and, know, he, he played in... Played in it's in his he blood. Is, he played in Vital Remains, he's played in Us, he's played in Discord, he's played Deeds in Flash. Deeds yeah, Flash, he's played in like all these bands, and I mean, between the East Coast and West Coast, it's back and forth with him. Uh, I guess, I don't know how long it's been now, Derek, what, like 16 years, 17 Deprecated. years? Deprecated. I can't forget Deprecated. 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 Yeah, I mean, you know. Um, been like almost 17 years now I guess that he's been really over on the East Coast mm -hmm. working with us and of course we go he goes back and forth he's got to come home see family hang out do all that stuff so I mean it, I'm sure it's been quite a heralding experience for this guy you mm -hmm. know to cut across the nation and play in a death metal band and make that your living you know yeah so yeah I think I think it's very interesting how it started with you guys and then kind of translated here to the West Coast into a more a little bit more heavier have faster form, version yeah. because bands here i don't think they have those slams the shorter parts right right they so now really they do they they do different types uh -huh. of style yeah. but i think that's the california mm -hmm. side you know that's what's making california unique in its own world you know what i mean it's like we all play music and get influence from someplace else so if they're out here ripping it up like you know aeon and you know faceless and shit like that so be it, man. More yeah. power to him. I'll see him on the road, guys. Right, you know right. what I mean? <laughs> okay, and now uh, this is kind of another thing that I, I think about a lot of weird things. I don't know if you've heard this uh, term in economics, like marginal utility. Well, I mean, no, I don't. It's basically like the more you use something, the less appealing is to you. Yeah, sure. You have one beer, uh, you have two, three, the fourth. Yeah, I don't know if you so can say that about us. <laughs> yeah. Usually, by the time I get to that beer, they're all delicious until yeah, I pass yeah. out. But, but you have two of them, the first that's and the like, last. Yeah, marginal yeah. utility. The more you use something, the less appealing right. is to you. Right. So, and I use this term for suffocation or brutal death metal because it's so complex that you can listen and listen and listen and listen, and it's like. Never gets old. Uh, yeah, because it's so many notes, it's so yeah, elaborate. Yeah, a lot of notes. Uh -huh. Oh, look at him go. There's a lot of notes, but hey, man, you know, I mean, it's just the way that style that we write. And I, 
hopefully it'll be something that'll stick around for longer than us. You know, that would be nice. <laughs> like you said, clarity will stick with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? know. So, and that's that's what I was trying to get at. We want to write things that are catchy enough that'll stick with you, and you, and you remember it. You know what I mean? So I think that's important. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we'll play ourselves out like Sega, no problem. Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> All right. And um, do you think there is any difference? in the way the brain works in bands, like for example, you, Dying Fetus, so more like New York bands that have this, a little bit like hardcore elements, or bands that is just like a straight dead metal, or straight. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that uh, most bands have their own uniqueness to them, especially you out on the East Coast. I mean, you'll be able to tell one apart from the other if, you, yeah. if, you're, if you're listening. Yeah. So, I mean, for them, they're all original in their own rights, even though that they're trying to do something a little bit more edgy, maybe a little bit more hardcore, maybe a little bit more death metal, black metal, thrash metal, whatever it is. But uh, they all have their own unique style, man. So I hope that's what su separates Suffocation from all the East Coast bands, is being pulled in there, and you'll be able to hear our music differently, you know yeah. what I mean? I was saying this, too, to a friend of mine. Like, I have friends that are in bands across other places, as do everyone else, but it's like... New York death metal is a staple for a mm -hmm. lot of people, you know, and if you're from Cali, you're proud of Cali death metal. If mm -hmm. you're from Baltimore, you're proud of Baltimore death mm -hmm. metal. It's like you're going to grow up coped to what's around you. Like, you know, for me, like, I think New York, I think internal bleeding, the human eyes, you know, mortician guys. Skinless. Yeah, skin, Skinless. exactly. You know, like, they, but they all have that same aggressiveness, mm -hmm. that same tone of darkness where, like, guys in Baltimore, like uh -huh. Visceral Disgorge and uh -huh. Fetus, like, they go for more of a slammy route. Mm -hmm because that's just what's around. You know, Cali guys, you got bands like The Scourge and Decrepit. It's, yeah. it's a little a sporadic a and fast. Style, like, it's just, know? but people take pride to what's around them mm -hmm. and what they grew up on, mm -hmm. you know? So that's how you get the different sounds. Yeah. Except Dawn of Demise from, it's like New York death metal from Denmark. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's oh, so yeah. awesome. <laughs> uh -huh. Bjorn. I love them. <laughs> yeah, because I remember, like, growing up in Spain, the first bands that I listened to, they were mostly East Coast bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I grew up like Incantation, yeah, you guys, yeah, yeah. Cannibal Corpse, and yeah, 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 Cannibal, yeah, yeah. or Dying Fetus, yeah, whatever. Uh, so yeah. I, it always stick to me like, the, yeah, like the hardcore element that. It's what's around. Yeah. Like, you know, I it's, 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 I, I, I'm a fan of hardcore bands as well, so I've been going to shows all over, mm -hmm. and that's just what appeals to me, you know. I mean, I think that kind of stuff, like when you're listening to different styles and variables of music, you know, from hardcore to punk to this to that. It adds a lot more variation to the musicianship that, you, you know, you work on, you know. And it gives you a lot more, you know, variety to choose from. And I think that really helps out a lot of the East Coast bands itself. Yeah, I think it's, it's, a, it's a cool mix there. Yeah, I mean, there's just... New York City was the melting pot of, like, every kind of style you could think of from, like, the 70s all the way on, you know. And uh, I think, I mean, still to this day, you know, the hardcore scene in New York is huge. Yeah. The punk rock scene, the alternative scenes, so all of them are big in New York. So I think it's kind of cool that we had that melting pot to grow up with and allow us to have that kind of diversity in our music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, mean, I, I think it, it shows. It's yeah, so speaking cool. of which, I know there's like this band that just formed in New York. I gotta look it up. Uh, it's like guys from Cypress Hill and Biohazard just. They have oh, a band I, think going. I, I think I read something, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> nuts. Uh huh. It's awesome. All right, so I think just. Couple more questions, and um, um, do you guys have any plans for a headlining tour? Well, at this maybe. moment, we really like to do a headlining tour. We were thinking we were going to do something maybe October and November, but uh, you know, things were still up in the air and under negotiation. So, we're really hoping that at the end of the year, tentatively, we'll come back around with one of our fellow bandmate bands. Um, I really can't mention it yet because everything isn't signed, sealed, and etched in stone yet. But uh, just maybe a little <laughs> die murder, maybe. Uh, oh. You know, we might be out with those guys. So um, that's really what we're looking to do up until the end of the year. But we ha we really do have quite a bit of touring up until the end of the year as it is. So after this tour, we get home July 1st. Our tour ends on Long Island. We have off the month of July. August, we get together. We go out. Uh, we go over to Europe for a month. We nice. come back September. We go to South America for two weeks. Then we come back home, and then you know, with that, uh, <laughs> back down, yeah. right into it. Uh, we should be back around sometime like either um, October, November, if everything works out tentatively. So, you know, busy year. Yeah, yeah, busy year. year. Yeah. And then next year, I mean, we've already started having festivals for February mm -hmm. at Netherlands Death Fest being. Oh. 
being advertised and so on and so forth. So, so we're looking to stay as busy as we can on this release, um, support our fellow death metal bands mm -hmm. and our friends that have supported us, and uh, also do our own thing when, it, when the time is right. right. You know? And Kevin is staying, right? For yeah, all, all I mean, those. I'm trying to kidnap <laughs> this guy. Um, right. You know, <laughs> you know as, as, as Frank slowly is uh, working his way into retirement <clears throat> fully, mm -hmm. um, you know, he was like, you better get this guy. I was like, okay, we're going to get this guy, and now we're out on the road. So together. Frank is the one that introduced you? Well, well uh, it's not an introduction, no, but yeah. once he heard him sing, he knew. Like, yeah. he was like, you pretty much should get this guy. And it was like, right. okay, Frank, man, because, you know, I'm playing guitar here. Yeah. I'm not trying to find the other guitar player. I already did that with Charlie. Yeah. Now it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I got to listen to my bandmates, you know, and business partners. If you and, find your own. Yeah, <laughs> I, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on the guitars, buddy. You work on the vocals. Yes, I'm, I'm hearing <laughs> Frank said something in Decibel about passing the torch, but I, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> All right. All right, so, so I think, yeah. Do you yeah, guys man. have anything else in, no. to say? Thanks for hanging. Stay heavy. See you out on the road. Support your local underground scene. Yeah, yeah, Listen yeah. to your under, uh, underground metal stations. Stay brutal, man. Oh, one last question, now that I'm pointing at the t-shirt. Uh -huh. do, do you think it's uh, nerdy to wear the t-shirt of the band that you're going to see no. and stuff like that? No, no, no. I wear the shirt I mean, of the we, bands I'm in, we always, so what is that? We, we always run into... they say that that's nerdy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I mean, we always run into laundry, laundry day. day. Who cares? Yeah, exactly. There it is. <laughs> yeah. You run into laundry day and you got a suffer shirt. I'm wearing it, dude. Yeah. But you know? see, don't be shy. Yeah, don't right. be. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much. Anytime, you Hope guys. Have a good time. Stay heavy, everybody. Thank you. Anytime. All right, see you next time. Bye bye.